We live in a twilight world. Let's do another quick recording. Uh, hopefully the rain hitting my car isn't too loud and um, and you can all hear me. But, you know, if it is too loud, you know, who gives a shit? These recordings are kind of meaningless anyway. <clears throat> um, I guess this video is going to be about, you know, what's next. Um, what's next for me? What's next for you? And what's next for the next kind of big thing the Matrix is going to throw at us? <clears throat> so I'll start off with me. Um, I've kind of... Well, I've definitely backed off of the Ukraine thing for, for many reasons. Because, you know, it was very obvious that I was participating in diverting energy to the Ukraine situation. So, um, you know, I always said I was going to back off at some point. And, um, you know, you're endlessly just giving your energy away, trying to... I don't know, you know, trying to make people aware of what's going on, it's pointless. Um, I've also kind of backed off from, you know, pushing the concept of illusion warfare, mainly because, how can I, how can I say this? What I've noticed is there's a lot of people that have turned up you know, out in the field that have basically, they're basically mirroring my, my content, but a year later, so, and they're getting massive amounts of, of attention, a massive amount of likes, um, and, uh, yeah, so it's only a matter of time before someone just, you know, gathers all the information off my Twitter and everything and just puts a book together, together, because that's essentially what I want to do, I want to ultimately write a book, um, that's going to be quite tricky because I've got the attention span of a fly. I can't spell and I hate sitting in front of a computer. Nevertheless, this is going to be one of them, you know, mountains for me to climb and I want to get a book out about illusion warfare. And if I carry on, keep slipping out the concept, you know, it's only, yeah, like I said, it's only a matter of time before someone just puts all of my stuff together and writes the book for me and gets all of the, um, credit, you know? Now, way before I, I ever stepped onto, um, you know, the social media space, I was well aware that I wasn't going to get a lot of recognition and that nobody does get recognition for being the first to say something or for a new idea. There's so much pirating of material. There's so much um, idea theft. There's loads of that shit going on. So I can't act like I'm shocked that it's happening to me because it's happening to everyone. Now, all these big accounts now that are, are getting really big regarding the Ukraine stuff are just saying the shit I was saying a year ago. And even copy the same kind of language and the same kind of tone I have to about 90%. But the, the last 10%, which is the most important, where I, you know, allude to this, you know, illusion warfare, they don't. That last most important 10%, they just divert it back to... Uh, blaming the CIA, blaming America, and as as a way to use the Ukraine war as a way to hate on Biden or something. So it's weird. And the thing is, where where they're copying the concept, they're not really answering the questions. Like people are throwing questions at them, they can't answer it because they don't really know about the concept because they've just copied it. You know, so it's a weird one. So yeah, that's where I'm at with that. I want to get the book out. And, you know, it's getting close to me retiring, definitely on Twitter, because I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to retire on two years, two months and 22 days, which I think is around August the 25th time. And then uh, once I'm off Twitter, I will divert time into writing a book. I mean, it's still going to be summer then, so I don't know, maybe if I just do one hour in the evening, you know, putting some effort into it, it might manifest. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But anyway, back to, you know, what's next regarding the simulation and the next big kind of um, bullshitty nonsense thing they're going to push at us. You know, it all really depends on the masses and what they believe. I mean, I know right at the moment they're pushing that whole alien thing. Apparently there was a four-hour kind of like press release from NASA pretty much saying that, yeah, man, 
there's been things, alien objects flying around for as long as they can remember, right? And nobody cares. It's getting no traction. It's getting no attention. And they can't really push something forward until it gets the right amount of atten attention from the masses. It's how illusion warfare works. They create the illusion. It has to get the belief. People have to believe it before it gets manifested into our physical reality, okay? Although they're creating the illusion that aliens are here and that they've been around or spaceships, people aren't believing in it. Therefore, they can't take it to the next stage or it can't go to the next stage of manifestation. You get what I'm saying? Whereas, like, if we take it back to the Battle of Kiev, they created the illusion that 56, 156 battalions were trying to take over the city. People believed it. They jumped on trains. They fucked off to more Western Europe. They joined the military. They manifested it, okay? 9-11. They believed, the masses believed, the illusion of a bunch of cave-dwelling Islamic extremists took down the Twin Towers. They believed it. They then, you know, backed and consented... Um, you know, military uh, action and occupation over in Afghanistan and Iraq. Illusion, belief, manifest. So, yeah. Um, these three pictures here, I'll, I'll get to them. Um, because what, yeah, so what you got to understand is underneath, you know, the city of London or you know, underneath wherever, somewhere in some deep underground base, they've got the whole you know, Black Cube, or, you know, in in Westworld Series 3, it was just depicted as a sphere. You know, the Black Cube, the Black Sphere, the Black Pyramid, whatever the fucking shape it is, doesn't matter. But, you know, it's reading the data constantly, minute to minute, second to second. Um, so they know how much people are buying into it through, you know, digital twins and just through the, yeah, second to second, minute to minute, observation of the data with people on their smartphones, on their black cube, on their mini black cubes they carry around in their pocket, you know? Now, if you've ever read this book, it's one of Philip K. Dick's very, very early books, The Variable Man, they kind of cover this. Um, essentially, you know, I'm going to do a bit of a plot spoiler. I won't spoil the whole plot, but I'll do spoil half the plot. So if you want to go and listen to it, probably go do that now. It's probably on YouTube for free. But essentially, planet Earth is at war with planet Mars. And each one of them, both Earth and Mars, has got a variable machine. And it's essentially one of these. They input the data. And they see how... And it gives them like a predictability of how effective their actions are going to be in winning the war against their enemy. So, for example, they'll put in, you know, what will happen if we build... 400 starships this thing will spit out an answer and say yeah you'll have a 9 out of 10 chance of beating your enemy Mars but the thing is the Martians have got spies on Earth and then they're giving the f information to the ver their variable machine they're going okay it's a 9 out of 10 chance that they're going to win the war if they build X what if we build 400 you know anti-starship cannons and then they're just forever going back and forth with this variable machine that's just constantly giving them the runaround. And they're not actually ever going to war with each other because they're basically just trying to rely on this machine to give them the, um, give them the answers. It's almost like a, an eight ball. So it's worth listening to that book. Essentially a guy, a time traveler just drops out of thin air and it really fucks up the variable machine both for the, for the people on Earth and for the people on Mars. I think Earth is called Tara, Terra, um, in the Philip K. Dick books. And yeah, in Westworld Series 3, you see it depicted as this. They've got one called Rahombom, or Rahombom, I don't know how you say it. You know, it's a biblical name that they use to manage the masses. You know, in Westworld Series 3, they're pretty much... They, everyone's consented to this thing, you know, running their lives. 
Um, you know, it chooses the best job for them, the best partner. Um, it makes it tries to make society run like clockwork. And obviously, you know, if you've seen the series, it doesn't go well. And they've got one underground as well called Solomon, which is dealing with all the outliers, the people they just can't control. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this shit's real. They've got this. I guarantee you. I mean, I can't prove it. I don't know where it's kept. I assume it's kept under the city of London in some deep underground base. But they've got this. This is what they use, yeah? This is why I use it in my picture here. The black cube. It's almost like, um, you know, it's a god. It's basically a god. Because, you know, if you know, if you know the maths around AI, I think it's every one day. What is a day for us? It's like 40,000 years for, for the black cube. Because that's how, how intelligent it is. That's how quickly it can move on. So by the time we've rubbed sticks together and invented fire, this has already gone 40,000 years ahead and made fucking nuclear power plants and stuff. You hear what I'm saying? So they've got that. And they're constantly like asking it, what should we do next? And they're putting in the data. And this is obviously giving them the feedback. Like you can't, you know, there's no point going ahead with the alien, uh, the illusion of... of Aliens coming from out of space because the people aren't buying it. We can tell by managing their little black cube smart devices, their little um, smartphones, they're not buying it at the moment. So that's why they've got multiple things going on at the moment. They've got World War Three, they've got climate change, they've got the whole uh, vaccine deadly virus. You know, I've got to be careful what I say here on YouTube. The whole vaccine deadly virus thing. They've got aliens, they've got a guy in a submarine at the moment. You know, they've got their good, you know, terrorism could always come back. You know, they're going to pick the thing that's going to be the most believable and what the Black Cube says is the best thing to do. It's as simple as that. So as for what's next, that's up to the, ma you know, it's out of our hands. It's how stupid the masses are in believing what they believe. So, yeah. But really, you know, the space alien one is really wearing thin, right? People are just not into it, man. Um, like, my theory is that's why they're pushing the multiverse so much. That's like option two in it, where they can't, they can't manifest, you know, Anunnaki space aliens coming out. Uh, from the stars, they're going to try and manif get the masses to manifest... Um, the multiverse in some way or form. So yeah, man. And as for what what's next for you, you know, I don't know. Ho hopefully you guys are, you know, if you listen to my content, to take my content seriously and listen to the whole thing of Illusion Warfare, you must be very switched on, right? And you must be in some way, shape or form, like myself, just sitting back, eating the popcorn, enjoying the moment, laughing at all this bullshit, right? But it does, you know, it, sometimes I'm quite envious of the NPCs for how much emotion they are, you know, how much, how much they're into it, you know, because part of me wants some of this shit to, I'd love for fucking aliens to come out of, um, out from behind the clouds and start a war man that'd be really exciting because the truth is you know um this was shown in the matrix films right outside of the matrix them guys are wearing shabby clothes on a freezing cold gray metal ship they're eating porridge they've got no hair they've got no eyebrows it's not a very good life outside of the matrix it's very boring and i'll be the first to admit that man you know when you're not triggered when you're not emotionally attached when you're not reactionary to all this shit, you know, you do have to kind of find excitement in life in other places, man. Like, and it's, um, yeah. This is why I get, I get a lot of my f uh, fun and action out of doing my illusion warfare reports. Where I go and see how, these, how the, the masses are getting, you know, puppeteered into some stupid event that just is pure nonsense. And it's only existing via their participation. You know, I get a lot of fun out of that. That's excitement for me. And uh, I guess at the end of the day, that's the kind of truth about the spiritual path, isn't it? It's not. <laughs> you know, the, the spiritual path can be very, very dark. You know, a lot of people um, 
Man, there's a lot of folks that can, you know, see the world for what it is, and they, and they kill themselves. It's suic- a lot of suicide, you know, for people that um, really have the eyes to see what's going on here, to understand they're in Plato's cave, you know, or they, or they end up in some kind of lunatic asylum where you just can't cope with it. It's kind of dangerous stuff, man. It can be very lonely as well, isn't it? It's hard to partake in materialistic bullshit when you know it's when when you know it's just so meaningless, right? Um, yeah, man. But yeah, so uh, like I was saying, I want to get a book out. I think that'd be ideal, or maybe just do like a really really decent presentation on um, illusion warfare report. You know, sorry, illusion warfare. Just in general, the concept and. Um, Maybe get back on the rounds doing a podcast and stuff. And to be fair, a lot of people have asked me to come on shows and that, and I've just kind of said no, or I've said yeah later on. <clears throat> a lot of people don't really. I don't know. I don't know. You know, you've you've probably noticed it yourself in this in this whole kind of trufa. Uh, and I'm using that word trufa uh, um, ironically in that the whole trufa community. They just jump from one thing to another, to another, to another. They're like swingers, you know? So, and I heard Howdy McCoskey say this, actually, on one one of the last kind of, um, you know, vlogs he done, saying, you know, realistically, you'll, you'll be lucky if you, you help 12 people in your whole lifetime, realistically. And I feel that's kind of true, man. I mean, so, man, I had about... I had literally thousands of people on board with Illusion Warfare that I look at them now, they've gone right... They've taken two steps back and they're back on the whole kind of uh, baby truther stuff of, you know, the Rothschilds, um, the Illuminati. You know, all that kind of shit that you... You, that, that, you know, and it's like... I just don't get it. I just don't get how you can keep... Moving on to the next thing. They're treating it like they treat Netflix, aren't they? They've watched one series. Oh, that was good. And they move on to the next thing. And then that's their little fad for five minutes. Whatever that, whatever the concept is there. And then they'll jump onto, you know, then, then they're back onto Simulation Theory. Then they're back onto a Prison Planet. Then they're back onto the Rothschilds. Then they're back onto, and it's just, it just never ends, man. It just never ends. And I think that's quite sad, you know? But anyway, I've rambled enough now. Um, I might do a few more recordings today because it's quite shitty weather, man. We're having a bit of rain. Ideal time to do some recordings. So yeah, we live in a twilight world. There are no friends at dusk.